Hello everyone and welcome to part two of our short little widget series that we're going to be doing here uh, explain everything to do with widgets and the UMG editor. Now in the first episode we talked about the basics of widgets and in this episode we're going to go through and talk about how we bind events and we'll talk about how we can manipulate the widget on the screen based upon what we're doing in the game. So we're going to create a little jump notification on the screen. We're also going to talk about the different types of bindings and why you should use one over the other. So let's jump in. So last time we looked at the basics of a widget and looked at how we put it onto the screen. Now let's get to react to something that's happening in the world. So if you remember from the first episode, we created this widget, which had this image in the top right hand corner. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that image based upon a thing that's happening in the game. In this case, we'll make it change color every time the player jumps. So I'm going to show you how you bind this and show you the different options you have available to you for this. So this image, first of all, is going to be set to is variable. So any part of this that it wants to be changed in game, you have to make sure is variable is ticked. Otherwise, you can't change it. And ideally, rename your widget component. So I usually go with IMG underscore and then whatever I want to call it. Jump notify. We'll call it. and hit compile and save. So I want this to flash whenever the player is jumping, okay, or is falling rather. So I'm gonna to go to my graph now. So if I go to the graph, it's on the top right here, I've got to switch between designer view and graph view. Go to graph view, and you get pre-construct, construct, and tick happening all here. Uh, so tick, we've seen before, if you've been doing any sort of blueprinting, it basically happens every single frame. So there's that construct is essentially like begin play where it's going to start off and fire only once and then pre-construct is going to happen like construct it happens before that but also happens in editor so you can actually use this to help you preview things as you are doing them and because i made that image a variable you should see it now named over here in the variable list and you can always switch back to the designer view by clicking up top right between the two so let's talk about bindings. So in my designer, I can actually change the binding of this image on the right hand side over here. You may see some of these options available to you have the word bind next to them. That means you can create a binding for this. Now, this is not my preferred method, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway, so you can see what it does and I can explain why it's my preferred method. So if I go to color and opacity, I'm gonna click on bind, and do create binding. This will create a function and it's going to return a color here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the player character. And I want to know if not the player character is falling. So if I just drag it from there, it's falling. And I want that to change the color. So I want to do is take the return value from this and do select color. Plug in our boolean, so it'll pick A when true uh, falling is true. So let's make that red when it's true, and when it is false, we'll make it white. Compile and save, and that's it. So if I go into the game now, we can see that color change happening. Now I said this wasn't my preferred method, and the reason why is more apparent when I say put on here a print string. Say hello. So as you can see, it's printing hello all the time, which means that function is also running all the time. Now, if you've got a fun an event such as jumping and falling happening, well, that's not really required to do it every single frame. Okay, that's what we call more event driven. So when I'm pushing buttons and reacting in game, well, I can tie that to an event and have far less calls than I need to. So let's take a look at a different way of accomplishing this. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go back to my HUD and I'm gonna remove this binding. So I'm gonna go to designer view, go back to my color and opacity binding over here. And click on remove binding. 
the pile. Save. Next, I'm going to go over to the graph. And I'm going to delete that function. Okay, so now I need to know whether or not the player is falling or has landed. And we're going to do that with bindings. Now, there is already a landed binding, but we don't have a jump binding. So we're going to go into our first person character and create one. So we just go over to there. And we're going to go on the event dispatches and create an event dispatcher. And we go on has jumped. Now, the benefit this one is going to have is that we are actually going to make it turn red when we jump rather than when we fall. So if we fall off a ledge, it doesn't do anything. It'll just light up when we jump in. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this event dispatcher and tie that over on our widget. Event dispatchers are really, really useful for widget work because you, of this action. You can make bindings and the widget can just listen out for those bindings happening. So let's call this event dispatcher on jumped. Now we could just tie it onto our started and completed section of the jump over here. Alternatively, we can also use the on jumped event, which as you can imagine, fires off when they jump. So what we'll do is we'll drag out on has jumped and do call and plug that in there. And then we can compile that, save it and go back to heads up display. So now I'm gonna get my player character and we're gonna cast it to our first person character. We have to do this because we need access to that event dispatcher and it's only belonging to the first person character. So we take that from there and we do bind event on has jumped. And now you're gonna get a little event pin. This event pin will go down here and trigger another event. So I'm going to do create event. And in this node, we can choose from the drop down an existing event or we can create a matching event. I'm just going to do create a matching event. And we'll do on jumped. So that is going to call this whenever it hears the on jumped. And when we have jumped, I'm going to change the color of my image. So drag out my image set color and opacity and i'm gonna set that to red but now we've got to do landed so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take from first person character again and do landed and do bind event bind event to landed delegate plug that in and we're gonna go Create event. And again, click on the drop down and we're going to create a matching event. Now you're going to see the list here is different from this list over here. This is because it's only going to show the correct signature. So the signature here is hit result. This one's empty. So if there's no matching events or functions, it's not going to show anything. So I'm going to create a matching event and do on landed. And the signature is this little pin over here. So this is the parameter or signature of the event function. So then I can take the same bit of code here. And I'm going to change that back to white. Well, and save that. Okay. So let's now go back to the game. Jump, landed. Jump, landed. But as I mentioned, falling will no longer be accounted for. So if I fall off this, nothing. So we've learned how to set up delegates and bindings so we can trigger widget changes. This is crucial for all widget work. So things like health bars, for example, which we can do in the next episode, are crucial to understanding this delegate process. So there you go, we can now use delegates and event dispatchers to help tie our widgets to the actual game content, which is going to be vital for all widgets going forwards. So in the next episode, we're going to show that in a bit more detail by looking at how to create a health bar using a progress bar and event dispatchers just like this. So if you want to watch that next episode right now, over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can just watch it from just $1 a month plus all the other videos early before everyone else. 
Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.